I'm here with Carla. She is a quantum energy healer and a higher consciousness coach. And Carla and I met about two months ago. It was really exciting. We were at a healing fair in Spring, Texas, which is where I happen to live. And she had traveled from where she lives about three hours away. And she's going to talk to us today about what she does. And it's such a beyond a thrill to have her here. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I'm really excited to be here. We, yeah, we had a really good time at the psychic fair. We kind of met and I think our personalities instantly meshed and joined and it was a lot of like inner child and joy and happiness. Um, do, should we just get right into it? Sure. That'd be great. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, so one of the things that I thought was really interesting was um you know we have like our soul family everywhere we're all scattered around and there's so many barriers in the human to recognizing each other and I think it's interesting how our personalities meshed right away because it was this instant like feeling of inner child happiness and joy and it's this elevated state of joy that just drew me to you and made me feel like hold on I know you like I've I've met you before and it felt really special. Oh, that's oh, so, ah, the word amazing is coming, but I'm like, it's even better than amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It was really special. Um, okay. I apologize. My chair is like really squeaky <laughs> on an angle to sit in, but okay. So just before we started our introduction, you said, um, you were talking about like noticing what you notice. So we were both really nervous when we started mm -hmm. and we kind of grounded in and I thought it was really beautiful what you were saying about noticing what you notice without labeling it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I teach a lot are coming into your heart space because so many of us exist outside of our heart space. And when we come into it, that's when we're in like our soul experience. And when you can get into that place where you're not expecting, you're not labeling, you're not doing anything, you're just observing and noticing what you notice and existing and how that grounded both of us within like <laughs> five seconds. Mm -hmm. And that was really powerful. So like being in your heart space is being intuitive. And that's so much of what I teach is like, we're all intuitive beings and it's our humanness and these experiences that have taken us outside of our energetic truth when we go back in where we're just still that's really where all the psychic magic and powerful abilities come in exactly yeah yeah it really is amazing how pure observation can just make this make this open this clearing for something amazing to be created within it and really just anything to be created. Totally. It's really powerful. Yeah. So would you like to talk a little bit about your process or maybe what you do isn't a process, maybe it's more organic than that, but would you like to touch on it or, or um, describe what's happened um, yeah. and, and how it works or maybe it doesn't work any certain way. Maybe it sounds, it's already coming through that it sounds more like, well, it just works <laughs> or it just happens. <laughs> it just kind of does this thing. It just kind of happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is kind of it, right? It's like, I think the one thing that I always do is ground in and get into that heart space. And for me, that always looks like taking in a deep breath and like so much of our awareness is in our mind, like in our thinking brain, but our existence is in our heart space. So it's bringing our awareness into that heart space, taking a deep breath and just setting the intention to ground into the heart. And from there, this imagery that I always get, it's like being in a cosmic womb. It's like you enter this space of darkness that's fully enclosed and protected. And it's, void it's just stillness it's the void where everything like nothing exists and so everything is possible and a lot of my processes okay 
what does this person need to heal? What do they need to know? What's coming through? And just allowing the space to communicate through pictures, through words, through feelings. And I get a lot of my information from feelings. So like I feel the grief, I can feel the, you know, whatever the emotion is. And then clear cognizant, like I just know. <laughs> How do I know? I just know. So a lot of that. Um, I do have a lot of my work also comes in with my hands. And so they're kind of ever since we got on the call, my hands have been really activated. So I've been like moving them around behind the scenes. But actually, let me see if I can do it. Will it do it? I got okay. really right when you said that about your hands, mine got really hot too. So that's why I started giggling. <laughs> yeah, no, we're on the same vibe together right now. Um, So I can ever since I got my hands activated, I can now change it on Zoom. And I don't know if I pressed something. Will it do a thumb? Is there a thumbs down? I don't know if I press something or if this is literally like my hands activating it. Uh -huh. I can activate like Zoom emojis now with my hands. Amazing. <laughs> so I, yeah, I don't know if I press something and did it on Zoom or if these really are my hands. But if it is, which I do think it is because I can feel it in my hands. It's like when we get into the zero point energy in our heart space, it's that space where everything and nothing exists. And when you're here, it's like you exit the grid work, which almost taps you into it in a really pure, I want to lower my hand now, in a really pure way. Um, and I've had a lot of experiences like this with technology. And we talk about synchronicities, like that's a form of, being in a temporary zero point, like things like this. It's like, is it going to do it now? Like, just hold on. It's loading. Can you see it loading? Oh, I can't see it, but. <laughs> oh, oh there do it you goes. see it up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but um, when we get into let me back. Okay. Let me backtrack. Let me backtrack a little bit. I went on a tangent. Um, <laughs> we exist in our heart space. And a lot of times what happens is we go through these experiences that take us almost outside of our heart center. Mm -hmm. And when that's the case, so we have our heart center, we operate outside of it. And when that's the case, people begin to build personas and perceptions of themselves based on how they interact with the world when they're not in their heart space. And the journey of coming back into your heart is a lot of like releasing and trusting and surrendering because it's like, I always say like stage one of the healing journey is having the courage to look at the things that have taken you, like hurt you, like Face all the things that you swept under the rug because you didn't want to face them, deliberately choosing to face them. And then phase two is, okay, now I have cleared all the stuff that have kept me outside of it. Now I'm standing outside because I'm scared to go back into love. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm standing there because it's a habit for me to not love myself and to not feel safe. And so phase two of the healing journey is, okay, love is safe. Let me surrender into the miracles and the blessings and this angelic frequency, which does exist in the heart space. And that is where heaven on earth gets created and alchemized and um, where like true manifestation comes in. Wow. I'm loving, I'm loving this part about deliberately facing the things that were causing us a lot of pain. Um I guess like one thing I did last month is um, attend a silent meditation course. And when I was a kid, I really hated sitting on the floor and I hated being quiet. And so what did I do for 10 straight days, but like sat on the floor and was quiet, <laughs> like almost, almost not an entire word the entire 10 days. I mean, except at some point the course manager like asked me or I asked I anyway there was a small conversation you know but anyway um and the whole time we're just sitting on the floor very minimal you know it's not like a couch or something it's like a tiny little thin cushion but it's not enough to you know 
what's the word? Um, yeah, it doesn't stop the pain. Let's say that. <laughs> so yeah. it's just like, I'm like, oh, this is, and then the best thing too is like, then it's in that kind of space where you're deliberately facing it. And so it's like, oh, okay, I can, I can observe this. I can be with this. I can, like, we can do that. Like I can go and, you know, and just really face it. Like you said, but also I'm loving that you added the part two of, okay, now it's like, and it's safe. Cause I mean, this is going to apply to, it just so reminds me of my personal life where I'm, you know, having sometimes like, oh, I don't want to be with this. I don't want to be with that. And, um, but it feels like there's so much learning happening in this session, just like for me personally. So, oh, yeah, I'm I, really glad. Yeah. Um, so when you told me you were going on a silent retreat, <laughs> first of all, I thought that was so incredible. But my question like instantly was, because you're an intuitive, you're a healer as well. And I know when we worked together, it was a lot of talking out loud. And my question right away that came through was, okay, so you're going to sit with your emotions. You're going to have these things come up, but then it's like, what do you do? Did you ever have this moment where you wanted to, like you faced it in such a raw way that you wanted to just like scream it and release it out, like have an energetic, like, ah, yes. like did that come up for you? Okay. Yeah. And you know, at the same time, the technique that they're using in that course is also to observe that sensation, like, you know, whatever that is, whatever that really feels like inside is <laughs> like, okay, be with that, too. like, watch that too, you know, so get into the sensations of that as well. So yeah, but you know, then later, when back out in the real world, where um, it's not a you know, 50 other people practicing the same technique and <laughs> it's like, yeah, it wants to come out. <laughs> so it's going to. Yeah. That's powerful. That's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wordless. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it feels like it's beyond. literally, yeah. It's like, it feels like it's beyond words, <laughs> but but it also does help to talk about it. So I'm, yeah, I'm not sure about, you know, I wouldn't say that being silent forever and ever is, the, you know, the thing to do, but for a time yeah. it can, yeah. it can provide some benefit. Definitely. Do you feel like there was anything that you wish you had done healing wise to prepare for it? No, I don't. Not really. <laughs> yeah. You just came in and was like. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. We're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I did, I did an ayahuasca ceremony, a three day retreat. Mm -hmm. And I always knew that it was something that I wanted to do. But Aya, Mother Aya is such a, she's so, such an intelligent Plant, right. And I knew that when I was going to take her, that I was going to have to face so much of myself. And I always knew that ayahuasca was a ceremony that I wanted to do, but I knew deep in my bones, like I have to go and look at those things that I swept under the rug for all those years, because I'm not going to be able to handle it and face it like all at once. And I did like a two year journey of slowly revealing and like moving the rug, looking at it, sweeping it, acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. And then when I went there, there was still so much more that came through, mm -hmm. but yeah, like I knew deep in my bones, I had to witness myself first before I could go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause a lot comes up. A lot comes up when you actually listen. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I guess, you know, now that you say that, I think, well, maybe it was the, I guess the time was right because I had been in counseling for yeah. some months. So I thought, okay, you know, <laughs> it's, it's safe to, not that it's ever safe, but <laughs> you know, the body knows. Yeah. Like yeah, it's, but 
it was the fourth time that I had done it. So you say fourth? Yeah. Wow. So I knew what I was getting into. Okay. Somewhat. <laughs> you never really know, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's yeah. cool. Thanks. Yeah. But um yeah, so I guess I was wanting to know if there were any memorable moments from any of the sessions that you have um, facilitated or any stories that you would like to share. Um, yeah. Just about just about what you've been doing and um, what, or even what you see happening in the future. Yeah. 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 I would love to talk about that. So one session that immediately comes to mind is well so let me backtrack and say what I do when I work like I'm just now getting into a place where I'm working with clients like I have my website up now um and when I came into this work um I had always I had already been like channeling and I had already like I, I was in a weird place where I was this energetic, intuitive being, but I was taken, like, not aware that I was. I knew that I was really different. Obviously, I couldn't relate to most people, but I didn't realize that it was because I was so grounded in my, like, in this energetic world. So now that I'm gone on, now I've gone on that healing journey of clearing the human and, like, embracing what these gifts are and, like, learning how to... um like not accentuate them, but like feed them, nurture them. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like my purpose is slowly like unveiling and revealing itself. So I'm still like seeing what the bigness of it is. When I started, I thought that I was going to, and I still do, um, heal star seeds. So people like us who come in and have this feeling of, I have this feeling of unconditional love within me my surrounding doesn't and because of that I become ashamed and it's like okay so it's like growing that feeling um can I start over yes okay okay so yeah let me start over because all of that's true but it's not what I wanted to say okay so Okay, so, so yes, I would love to talk about all of that. Um, so, hold on, something's brewing inside of me. Let me just, like, listen, because it's... Mm -hmm. And, like, my hands are activating, so let me just tap in. We get so used to being unseen that to be seen finally can feel like a really scary reveal of our authenticity. And to be fully seen is to be fully comfortable and safe in your being. And I think that the work that we're doing now in grounding ourselves at this time as the world shifts and the whole Everything that we experience in our own lives, the planet experiences, all of the decades and generations and massive experiences that our ancestors have had, the planet experienced that as well. We are her children. As much as we come into families and we say, oh, this is my mother, this is my father, that's actually your sacred sister and your sacred brother. Our true mother is this planet. And all of the feelings of separation and isolation and neglect that we've experienced, she has too. And, you know, what's happening is people are saying, oh, we are waking up, we are waking up. And it's, no, the planet has reached her breaking point. She cannot handle being so separated from her own children. And because we are her conduit, she experiences consciousness through us we are the conduit to now heal her so as we stay grounded in this energy and have these conversations not only does it heal the people who are looking for our teachings but it heals us because 
we are connecting, we are healing each other, we're giving each other the space to be seen. And this is the work, like I'm already feeling so much more grounded, like in my lower chakras, right? This is the work that we're doing. Yeah, that just, I want to say it makes sense, but it seems more than that. Like, it seems, it just seems like the highest calling that we can aspire to is to reconnect, re, you know, reorient ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. But. Absolutely. And it's like this inner calling, right? Like, you don't know what that looks like to connect again. Like, what does it mean to feel unconditional love? What does it mean to not feel like you have to hold back in any way? What does it mean to be like, I have all of this love and I'm so excited to give it to you. Like that is such an unknown. And to be able to do that, not in this direction in our future where we're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this for my future, for our children. But it's also to extend that hand back and be like, let me give that also to my parents and my grandparents and all the people who didn't have these like conversations and opportunities like they everyone operates from their own level of consciousness. So can I extend this unconditional love, this forgiveness, this compassion, like in both directions? And that really is the work of, I think, like of a psychic, of a starseed, of a what do you call yourself? <laughs> I never have a name. <laughs> uh, like maybe yeah, someday, like, someday one will come to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some uh, the word intuitive is something that's like just genuine, gen- generally used like for friends and you know just like I have this intuitive friend. I'm like that's every friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it definitely feels like a lot more than that. I'm like, no, everyone, like people are healers. We, you know, and the people that are close to me normally, or even somewhat acquainted, it's like people just um, seem to be tapping into that. And it's, it's absolutely amazing beyond, beyond amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing that in your own life where like people who know you and Oh like, yeah. Yeah. It's been a, a couple of, or a few years of seeing that. And it's, um, so, I mean, so beyond beautiful. <laughs> so special. When did you, when did you start your journey? Cause you just said a few years. So how long have you like been aware of? Well, it was such a gradual experience. Like it probably started around 18, like with the self-help section and just kind of like going through books and being like, Oh, so this is what all of that was. Oh, this is why this is interest, you know, been of interest. Um, oh, okay. That's, you know, and, and cause some of the books that were picked up were like people channeling beings. And I'd be like, you know, I don't even know what that is. I mean, some part of me knew what it was, but <laughs> like, <laughs> and, but the advice that came through just was so, you know, looking back, it was such a high consciousness. And I mean, and it still is, but it just at the time, like didn't really realize how powerful it was. Like, I mean, I, of course, on some level, I did realize how powerful it was, but didn't really have much of a framework for, okay, you know, here's the range of human experiences. And here's where I've kind of been most of my life. And like, my soul is calling me to go, you know, (laughs) um, into places of joy and love and peacefulness and further and (laughs) um yeah so to say when it started I mean (laughs) it just there was little bit by it was such a little bit by little bit experience because first it was the books then it was maybe a seminar then it was maybe a meetup group then it was a (laughs) you know then it was like a little another seminar and another book and another this and another (laughs) and but I guess when I got really, you know, there was a, some point when I got really kind of afraid of something, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know what I've been doing, but, you know, whatever I've been doing has not really worked out for me. And it kind of shocked me. And it was so I, I thought, OK, I don't know what I've been doing, but I need to get real with this. Like I need to, you know, um, 
get myself on the on the path <laughs> and so it was kind of there was definitely a recommitment probably like four or five years ago um reading this book called power versus force by david hawkins and he he ha- he's the one that kind of showed that framework of um the human experiences and the they're on a scale and you know there's like the very there's the stuff at the bottom that without judgment they're just things that um you know don't really work um i guess kind of experiences that are not constructive and then so once i found out about that i thought oh okay there's a way to more or less measure where i am in this in these experiences and I'd like to go higher. I'd love to just keep going. My soul is definitely calling me, you know, higher and higher as it is for every, I mean, for, for people, you know, like all of our souls want us to go higher. That's probably why we're here. (laughs) Can't say definitively, but it seems that just feels true. And, um, so there, so with the recommitment, it was like, uh, uh, point of asking starting to ask questions what can be done like what what in the physical plane can be um actually practically um you know take an action on to to do that and i will continue. so i got to this point where i was like okay i gotta get serious i gotta understand this spiritual you know part of myself, spiritual side of me, which really is the whole self. But, you know, at the time, I probably didn't, didn't fully realize that. But um, anyway, so a lot of questions started to be asked, like, okay, what can be done to continue expanding and continue um, going to what we call higher consciousness? And the first answer that came through was like, stop drinking alcohol (laughs) and I was I was like um okay anything but that (laughs) (laughs) please not that one yeah but you know over time and I did you know I did fight it a little not a lot because I didn't think it wasn't like a huge part of my life but it was apparently enough that I was you know I was it was very social for me and um but that was also another answer was like hey the the people you're surrounding with, with yourself with you know maybe maybe, uh, you know, look into just, just observe (laughs) and just see, you know, who's adding, adding to your life and who's, um, and a lot of that too was trying to fit in with certain, with with crowds that really weren't, you know, my, weren't the people, what, I guess my soul wasn't trying to go where they were going is the best way to say it. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, so anyway, yeah, then after uh, some time, it became like such a no brainer, okay, no alcohol, or like, very, very, very little, and um, almost none. And <laughs> then one of the last times that I drank, I, I could feel my my consciousness kind of <laughs> not quite as expanded as normal. And I was like, hey, no, I'm used to, you know, I'm used to my consciousness being, you know, really big these days. And I don't like it to shrink wow. even a little bit. <laughs> And I remember it took like five, four or five days to get back to where I had been before I had even just a little alcohol. (laughs) And I was like, wow, that was really not worth it. You know, that was not, not what I'm looking for in life. So, but that's just one example. And then the questions continued and it got to the point where it was very detailed, like writing out lists each day of, okay, this is where to be at this time, (laughs) this time, um, but in a fun way. And it was it was getting things done in a productive way, but it was also, and I mean, at the same time, it was like, wow, doing these productive things and maybe some things you don't typically think of as wanting to do, but then interspersed with a lot of things that just bring the heart beyond, you know, just beyond a joyful state. And um, so like letting my heart lead me around and take me to places that had, you know, fun surprises and, um, you know, sculptures I never would have thought to, you know, the brain couldn't have probably ever come up with, you know, so many places that had such interesting um, artwork and 
uh, or stores that had something on sale that was like completely amazing and perfect for me or you know, yeah. just just different. I mean, just so many things and, and people and meeting amazing just, synchronicities, yeah, right? Yeah, just meeting beyond amazing people and just so it, it's just it was so such a joy. I mean, it, and it still is. It's such a joy. It's such a treat. And um, yeah, so it, there's so much thankfulness that even, you know, even if it was something kind of difficult that got me there, it's like, oh, it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> it um yeah yeah I think that's really powerful because you know we it's really easy to look at a person and on the outside it can look like they're denying themselves of so much stuff it's like how can they be so like how can they live this lifestyle right and it's like well when you go and you return to your authentic self where and your soul will tell you what that is like for you it was like no more alcohol like you are in your most joyous and expanded state when you're not having anything that alters you. Like when you go and listen to, and it starts so small, it's like, just change this, tweak that, get this idea and like get, follow those little like trails and that's your authentic self. And it's like, it doesn't take any work. It's actually so much easier to listen to that call than to continue to do what the mind does. And like, all these things outside telling you to follow these trends and do these things. It's like, you know, when you say no, when you listen to what your heart wants, life is so easy. So easy. And you do get those synchronicities. And like, like I was listening to you say that and it's like, you're in the heart space. Like people do have synchronicities and it's beautiful that they have these moments, but like, you can have that all the time. Like when you live in your heart space, you live in a heaven on earth where every single day it's miracles, blessings, magic. Like it can be like that all the time. And that is the beauty of going from the mind and into the heart. Wow. Yes. That's such a succinct way to put it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <Was it? laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 And, and is there anything? um that come like that comes to your heart to share with people um for people to contact you if they would like a any kind of um any kind of the coaching or energy work that you do any of the healing that you do yes so I just created my website it's uh violetflamehealing.net and I have an astrology healing which is really incredible so what it does is we all get born at a very specific time. And what a lot of people think is their personality is a little bit of trauma, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of fear of rejection. And they interact with themselves and the world as these little pieces of themselves that are not actually themselves. And so what astrological healing does is it says, oh, okay, this is who you're born to be. These are sort of the ways that you are not fully tapped into the power of each house. So let's give you an energetic healing to just essentially, you were born this way. Okay, let me energetically remind you of the power that you hold as a soul because you were born at the perfect time in the perfect location to the perfect family. Let's restore you. And then I also have my quantum timeline alchemy sessions. And so that is the energy work that I do. And this is something that I'm really coming into now, which is like the higher consciousness coaching, like talking to people through it, but then also doing the energy sessions where, okay, let's go into your heart space. Let me see all of, let me see what energies you're holding from this lifetime. Let me see what, what you're holding from your ancestry, from your lineage, right? Because we come in here and we are the ones that are alchemizing what our family couldn't. Like we're the disruptor. We are the one that heals not just our family, but what we heal within our family, we're healing the entire planet. So let's clear away all those energies and then you return to your heart space, right? The next part of course is like, once you clear it, then you surrender and come into your 
heart, like you embrace the love that is now available to you. Um, and it's, it's really beautiful. So I have those two sessions right now. So you can book with me and I'm very excited if you want to. And then I'm also on TikTok, which is a really fun platform. I'm creatrix, creatrix underscore Carla on there. And um, if I can go on a little detour from this. So earlier you had asked me, um, are there any like moments that stood out to you? Like, is there anything that you want to share? And I wanted to, like my mind wanted to talk. There was an experience that came to mind, right? But my body said, no, no, no. I have like source said, no, no, no. I have a message that I need to deliver right now. And I started stumbling over words. My hands got hot. I was like, okay, let me tap in. Mm -hmm. And I shared that message, that channeled message about what we are doing. Like the people who are going to hear this, like you are here to heal yourself and return to your heart space. Because when you do, you're going to shine this beacon of light that is going to heal people just by being in your presence. Like Mm -hmm. that had to be spoken. That is an act of following your intuition. So I do want, I do actually have a story that I would like to share now. So I'll say it now. Okay. Um, So, you know, we have, we do carry a lot of stuff from the family that we're born into. And we choose the family so that we can alchemize their specific fears and, um, like feelings of separation and all of the things that are not unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And one of my energy partners, when I first started my program and getting my certification, we were doing a healing together and I got this visual of her being like, and it was very like, like samurai era. And it was her as a soldier. And she had this like sword in her chest and what I got was this visual of like her mom pulling it out like to save him but then it like killed him because he was a it was a man in that lifetime Mm -hmm. and it was this grief of oh my god like I tried to save my child but I hurt my child and in this lifetime there's this feeling of lack of trust And like, they want to connect, but there's like, but I don't want too much of you. Right. And so that's a repeating pattern. And so we come back into our lives and we meet the perfect people. We come into the perfect family and yeah, there's these energies that you can feel are not harmonious. And it's like, you can either like get stuck in the humanness of how it feels, or you can do sessions and whether I'm the healer that someone feels called to connect with or it's someone else, it's like, you're here for a bigger picture because love, unconditional love, grace, and compassion are the only energies that are real. And everything that you experience that's outside of that is outside of the heart space. So we need to heal it and integrate it back in. And we did that session. It was so profoundly healing. And she was like, hey, like, I'm that makes like a lot of sense of starting to heal that. So we do so much, like we are here for so much more love than we are mentally aware of because we're so aware of the pain and the disharmony, but unconditional love, grace and compassion are the only, only, only things that are actually real. (sighs) Yeah, and it's beautiful. And everything is an opportunity to heal. And like, that's something you were kind of saying earlier of like, um, just choosing to really witness what's coming up. And like, with you, with your silent retreat, it's like you, there is like rage is a very sacred emotion. Like rage is the part of you that's like, I am finally acknowledging what I couldn't before like rage is like rage is really unconditional love rage is like I really love myself and I'm aware that I haven't been like that's what it's like rage is beautiful it's sacred right and you were saying you know and even when rage came up or like any emotion that made me want to release it Mm -hmm. I still just witnessed it like 
I just experienced it for what it was. And that's so beautiful and so powerful just to just allow all of the things that we've experienced to just show ourselves as opportunities to love them, no matter how ugly or scary they present themselves. They also, all those parts of us want to be loved and integrated back into our heart space. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And hearing, I mean, and, and remembering, I guess that, you know, the sacredness of that, of even something that, yeah, something, you know, every emotion, every emotion being sacred, like, because it's all coming from that place of, you know, I can be loved too, no matter what I, you know, any, anything can, can have love added to it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for putting so much into words, but also into um, into energy and sharing that. Thank you. Yes. That felt really special to share. I've, yeah, this has been really wonderful. And it's interesting because, you know, like we all have really, and this is kind of something we were saying at the very beginning, like we have these unique we all we all know the same thing like we every healer is going to talk about the same thing which is come back to unconditional love and it's our unique experiences that give us the unique words that only we can say that only you can say that only i can say that will cause someone else to resonate and this is like this is so full circle <laughs> this is so full circle because this is exactly what we said in the beginning it's like we are having this conversation for the people who are going to hear it and feel activated by it. But it's healing us because we are giving energy and we are acknowledging and witnessing who we are in this conversation. And it's full circle. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's so much gratefulness over <laughs> here. Yeah. For, for the sharing, for, it just feels like more than sharing though. It's like, there's just this, um, like an, an energy that becomes, becomes one, you know, and it's created here in this space. And even, you know, we're on zoom, but it's like, it's, I see it like, Oh, <laughs> camera's flipped, but like over here between us. <laughs> no, my heart is like expanding all the way. Right. Like my heart is literally like, it's like my heart is going down into my arms. Like it's, such a big beautiful feeling it's so wonderful yeah well and it's such a um amazing feat that you know now these types of things can be recorded and shared um of course then again it feels like well yeah that was always going to happen <laughs> it, it had to eventually <laughs> but, yeah. so a lot of gratefulness for being able to record it and um also for anyone the people who are seeing this, those who are watching, who are seeing the replay, thanks so much for, for being a witness. And um, would, would it help also to share the website link? Um, it'll be in the description, but um, would it also be nice to, to say it out loud? Yeah, it's violetflamehealing.net. Okay, great. Violet Violetflamehealing.net. Great. Yep. And um, thanks so much again. We will um, hopefully have some kind of follow-up interview soon. And yeah. I'm really looking forward to chatting with you again. So this has been such a pleasure. So much gratitude. I, yeah, I know we're about to end this. Um, can I invite us to just like bask in this gratitude together? Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to invite us into our heart space. I don't know where this message is going to go, so I'm just going to hold space for whatever wants to come through. And I'm feeling really grounded. I can actually feel it in my root right now, like really specifically and in my throat chakra. So just giving ourselves the permission 
to feel safe in being heard, to feel safe in being in our authentic expression, to give gratitude for who we are and to what we are and for the unique components that make up who we are. And sitting in the appreciation and in the grating, gratitude and in the knowing that we are divinely here and we are divinely guided and every small step that we take, whether we know it in that moment or we find out much later, every step that we take is guided. <sighs> And yeah, just downloading in that knowing that we are so held by our cosmic mother. We have our guides, we have our team, we have our higher self who is always with us, guiding us and protecting us. And for the people that are here and are aligned with the message that you're sharing, know that the first step that you're taking with the step that you're taking that feels like the first step, you took the first step years ago and it started, like I'm getting emotional now, like it started when you had the courage to say, why do I feel like this? Like you, you hold the code to more unconditional love, to more freedom of true emotional freedom and expansion and whatever you feel like is the first step is just another step and yeah thank you and bringing that into the heart space allowing your angel wings to open up really feeling the space that that message brought through I can feel it in my arms as well of just having this deep inner knowing and feeling that we are so unconditionally loved that we know what to do next, that we can always ask for guidance, bringing this knowing into our crown chakra, allowing for this beautiful divine connection and communication, opening up our relationship to our higher self and our guides and to source energy, and just allowing this frequency of unconditional love to come in and integrate into our entire being, just feeling so whole and complete and healed right now in the now space. Yeah, bringing that into our energy body, our physical body, our emotional body. Integrating this healing into every cell molecule and atom of our being into our mind and allowing our conscious mind to reprogram to self-love, to forgiveness, to compassion, to grace. We're going to say thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you for letting me channel that through and do that healing. Thank you to everyone who's going to watch and receive that. I think, Warren, you have such a special community that are here and that you are drawing. Like, I'm getting so emotional because the people that you're creating this for, like, you're such an incredible soul and person. And, like, I'm really grateful for you standing in your power and like that message said, like, I know this feels like a really, oh my God. <laughs> I know this feels like you're taking a first step, but like you took this step so long ago. And this is like, you're opening up a tra trajectory to so many more beautiful things. So I gave gratitude and thanks to you for what you're doing here and for following your soul. Received. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you so much. That's this has just been, ah, yeah, absolutely incredible. So I feel uh, that. Yeah, same. Okay, well, looking forward to the next time we chat. I hope it's very soon, and looking forward to the next time we can do another interview and kind of see what comes through again. So, absolutely. Thank you for having me on today. Yes, my pleasure. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.